morning guys uh, John Wilson I'm, uh, I'm back again um, I just wanted to do a, a video on uh, removal of plate heat exchangers or, or basically the unnecessary removal of plate heat exchangers um, one of the major call outs that you guys get is fluctuating hot water where basically the water is going hot and cold and your customer can be jumping under the shower like a rabbit's nose in and out in and out hot cold hot cold well obviously not teaching to suck eggs in any shape or form but that's usually down to a block plate heat exchanger and that block block plate heat exchanger is not a boiler fault it's debris that's within the heat exchanger i've done some some drawings here of plate heat exchanger and i've got a, a cut down heat exchanger for you guys just to look at now here we've got a plate heat exchanger where we've 82 degrees coming in and let's say for instance well 86 coming out really that can't happen but we'll address that shortly here we've got a heat exchanger where we've 80 degrees c coming in and 70 degrees c coming out here we've got 81 degrees c coming in and 45 degrees c coming out now these two differential clamps here guys these are clamped on to a piece of copper pipe. So basically the differential between these two, the, the, the instrumentation that we carry is not accurate enough to get a reading bit for the differential because it's a pipe. So the temperature is the same across that pipe when we're doing a differential reading. When we come to a heat exchanger, a heat exchanger in its own definition, it exchanges heat, that's what it does, okay? Now, the reason for this boiler, when, you, when you've got a boiler that's firing up and dropping out, going hot and cold, always make sure that the burner is actually dropping out, guys. This 82 degrees C is very, very important. And if we looked at these heat exchangers, this one is one that's working. There is a, a level of debris in this one, but this one is working pretty decent because we've got 81 degrees C coming in and 45 degrees C coming out. This one is way off because we've only got a 10 degree differential. So basically it's, it's not becoming a heat exchange, it's becoming a pipe. And this one is very important with 82 degrees C coming in and a hotter temperature coming out. Now, we exchange the water, the cold water comes into the heat exchanger. The flow from the space heating as the diverter valve moves across, obviously we get the transfer of heat, okay? Now, as the level of debris comes more severe in this heat exchanger, the differential temperature gets less and less and less. And just, just to put it in simple terms, basically all we're doing, guys, we're changing the heat exchanger into a pipe. And why are we turning it into a pipe? Because we've just, we just get to the stage where we're one single track through the heat exchanger. So it's no longer exchanging heat. So the course of action there is to take the heat exchanger out and give it a good cleanse. Now, the reason for the video, guys, is there are so many plate heat exchangers that are taken out unnecessary. And how many times have you done it where you've been with your customer, You've had your bucket there, ready to show the customer the debris, and surprise, surprise, you look a clown because there's no debris in there. Well, there's a couple of checks that you need to do before you start dragging plate heat exchangers out of boilers, and it will save you a lot of time if you, if you heed what I'm saying. Now, on a boiler, we have the space heating thermistor, the primary thermistor, what you call. And this is on the, the central heating flow. When the diverter valve is in the heating mode, this pipe supplies the space heating. When we're in domestic hot water, the diverter valve mechanism moves across and we move it to supply the plate. Now, the central heating thermistor has three functions. The first function is for temperature and modulation of the heating. The second function is built-in frost protection. At 10 degrees, the pump energizes. At five degrees, the, bur the burner will fire and raise it to 25 degrees C. So it's pipe stat and frost stat in one. And that's across most boilers these days. Now, the third function is very important. It's high limit. And high limit is rated between 82 and 85 degrees. And that's pretty much a standard in the industry, guys. So the high limit is what kicks in when the burner actually drops out. So that's why the customer gets hot and cold water, because it's the high limit stat that's reaching 82. Because why is this getting so hot? It can't dissipate the heat because the plate heat exchange is bunged up with debris. So that's the reason for it dropping out. It's the high limit stat that dictates that, okay? Now, one thing, the couple of things that you, you, you must do, or I'm, I'm not saying must, I recommend that you do, okay? This is an old atmospheric appliance, and this is a standard Honeywell gas valve, and on this gas valve we have 
a plastic nut and we have a brass nut, okay? The plastic, the, the brass nut is the low burner pressure, the plastic nut is the high burner pressure. Now, with a gas valve, the high burner pressure is controlled by the thermistor and the setting. The low burner pressure on, on old atmospheric boilers, guys, is purely a manual setting. So let's say this particular boiler, the low burner pressure is 2 millibar on domestic hot water and heating, and the high is 11.2. Now let's say, for instance, that somebody has set that low burner pressure far too high. If they've set that far too high, we've got a big problem there, because basically it won't modulate. So when the customer's running hot water, that's why they're having problems with it going hot and cold. It's not the plate that's bunged up, it's the low burner pressure that's too high, so you've wiped out the modulation, and basically the pipe with the primary thermistor will get hot, and it would mimic the plate heat exchange of being blocked. The other thing that you must check, so that's one point to, 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 to try and remember, this will save you hours in your career. The other thing to remember, here I've got a thermistor sheet, and if you just pan down onto this sheet if you can, if you can't get this, then I will gladly send you it. On this thermistor sheet, here I've got a, a, a clip-on thermistor. And my multimeter here. One thing with multimeters, I suggest, if you don't fully understand the operation of a multimeter, don't buy an expensive automatic one to start off with. Start off with a cheaper one that you actually set the range. And if you physically have to set the range, guys, it's like train the trainer. So when you're setting the range, you understand what the ranges are. So give yourself six months with a cheaper multimeter. Get to know the range settings, and then by all means move on to your all singing, all dancey fancy one that's automatic. When you lose touch of what the range settings are, by all means then go back to your cheaper one. But train the trainer, that's what life's all about. Train yourself, okay? Right, so... If I take a reading on this thermistor, okay, I am looking there at about 10.92. I'll just do that again. No, I'm not. I'm looking at 11.5, okay? So if I come down my chart to 20 degrees, because that's going to be the range, and look to somewhere near to it there, we're looking at 11.42, okay? Always ignore the last digit. I'll explain this more in depth if you wish. So 11.42... If I look there, 20 degrees, come up at 22 degrees. So this, the mister here, guys, is reading roughly 22 degrees. Now, we've already said that the high limit is 82 to 85. So let's come to 82. At 82 degrees, the thermistor, the negative temperature coefficient, will read 1.17. Now, it's possible for this, the mister, to be knocking off premature. So that thermistor could be going to, if you like, high limit at the 60. So it could be going to high limit at, at let's say, 2.49. Now, if that's the case, then obviously the, on domestic hot water or central heating, the burner would drop in and out again. So it would simulate again that the plate heat exchange is full of debris. So what you must do, guys, is check your low burner pressure. And if it's, an, if it's a pre-mix appliance, check the low, the, 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 the low fan speeds. Because if the low fan speed's too high, you're going to simulate exactly the same on a, a pre-mix. But go back to, the, to where we were there. Always check the, 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 the primary thermistor. Because if that is out of range, it will simulate that that plate's full of debris. And trust me, guys, some of them are not the easiest jobs in the world to get out. So, you know, it will save you a lot of time. Um, so... That's just a brief video about unnecessary taking out of plate heat exchangers, okay? Um, as I say, if I am boring to death, I'll, I'll pack in, but uh, just trying to help out. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.